Okay, welcome back to chapter 13, last part of our uh, uh, individual taxation, which is amending a return. We kind of have a scenario, which I'm gonna use that in order to kind of see how it looks like if we do in a real life scenario. Uh, amended return previously, um, it was to be, uh, it has, it had to be uh, like paper return, paper, but recently, um, I think it's last, God, maybe two years or so. Uh, anyway, it's e-file available for amended return. So you can e-file it now. Um, individual uh, file 1040X, which is amended return. And uh, they correct their mistakes on the original by tax returns, typical mistakes taxpayers may need to correct include incorrect use of filing status uh, or filing to report the correct amount of income, deductions, or tax credits. Taxpayers generally have three years from when they filed their original tax return to file an amended return. So three years is your deadline. Taxpayers who file their tax return before the original due date are considered to have filed their tax return on April 15. Okay, so your date starts from April 15. Um, if you did in March, still that means you filed in April 15. So Joan filed an extension to file her 2022 tax return, giving her until October 15, 2023, six months longer um, extension to file her 2022 return. Joan files a return on July 16 of 2023. Joan has until July 16 of 2025. So you did in 2023, July 16, 2024, July, 2025, July. So, is it supposed to be 2026? Yeah, it looks like that. 23, 24, 25, 26, yes, 26. So the reason is typo probably here because they changed this 2020, 2021 to 2022 and then they forgot that part. But that's fine. Yeah, it should be 2026. Yeah, three years. Anyway, uh, Amy filed her 2019 return on March 29th of 2020. For purpose of filing an amended return, Amy is considered to have filed her return on April of 2020, April 15, even though Amy did in March, but still is April. So she has until April of 2023. So 21, 22, and 23, that's three years, to file an amended return for 2019. So one example that I did for uh, a relative, uh, she got, she took her tax return to someone else and they filed the W-2 that she got, two W-2s. And uh, okay, she filed it and she got a refund probably, uh, which is good. <clears throat> but then I look at it, I said, wait a moment, you are taking care of your par uh, your parents as a home care provider, uh, and you are living with your parents in the same address. So technically, the income that you have uh, is not taxable under IRS Notice 2014-7, which says if you are a home care provider for someone, let's say your parent, and you are living with the same person on the same roof, then that income, it's good to use for uh, income tax credit. But technically, you can exclude that from taxable income. Okay, this is another tricky part. So be careful what I'm saying. I said, you have two W-2s, okay? 
And I said, you can exclude it from taxable income because you are living with the same person on the same roof, doing home care services and under IRS 2014-7, that's excludable income. However, because you work, you want to get earned income credit. Now, you have two W-2s. If you add them up, your, earn, your earned income will be so high that you will get no earned income tax credit as a single person. Combining two W-2s, your income is high. You're not gonna get earned income tax credit. So in the software, it says, um, every software is different, but overall, I'm just saying, in the software, there is a box that says, um, is this W-2 uh, ap applicable or qualified for earned income tax credit? So since you have two W-2s, you have to see which W-2 is more beneficial to you. You check the, the first W-2, look at the refund as an earned income tax credit to see how much you are getting. If it's, and write it down, how much is it? And then uncheck that W-2, check the other W-2, and then see how much earned income credit you get on that situation. Obviously, one of them is higher earned income credit compared to the other W-2. Whichever it is, keep the higher W-2 as checked for uh, earned income credit applica uh, applicable W-2. So you keep one W-2 out of calculation for earned income credit, ignore it entirely. And also both W-2s will be excluded from uh, uh, income tax because you are living in the same home, doing home care services for your parents and all under IRS notice 2014-7, you will not uh, end up paying tax for that, income tax for that. So for that uh, specific uh, relative, what I did, I did, at that time it was also paper amend anyway. So I amend manually, I copy a, you know, I open a PDF 1040X and I amend every return one by one. I amend return number one, three years ago, return number two, two years ago, then the third return last year. I re amended all three, put it in an envelope, send it to the IRS, cross fingers, see what gonna happen. So she got all refund for every single amended return, few hundred dollars, whatever it was. So she was happy. And after that, now that person, first of all, she doesn't go to the other person who was preparing taxes anymore. So I, I prepare taxes now. I know that she's uh, qualified for that 2014-7. And in your software, the practice lab, uh, I mean, Tax layer recently, I think starting a year ago, uh, they updated the W-2 entry, data entry portion with a box that says, is this a, a, a Medicaid waiver uh, income, something like that, Medicaid waiver something. And that W-2, as soon as you get to that, Medicaid waiver, check the box. So that means, yes, I, I am entering the W-2, but guess what? This is based on IRS notice 2007. I checked that box. That means this is Medicaid waiver income from income tax. Um, and right and probably next to it or under it, there is another box that says, applicable or something like that for earn income credit. Again, that's the box that you want to test because you have two W-2s. You want to see which W-2 you want to apply. W-2 number one or W-2 number two to get that earn income tax credit. Are we good up to here? Next thing, you cannot play smart. You cannot say, oh, I have one W-2. 
but I want to, let's say, just enter a portion of that one W2 at earning as earn income credit. Uh, you cannot do that. Either you enter that W2 as a applicable for earn income credit or not. You cannot change the dollar amount of how much you wanna make it as applicable for earn income credit to increase your earn, earn income credit. So either in or out, nothing in between. Yeah, good so far? Okay, so be careful. You're gonna get uh, uh, clients like that, that they are doing home care services. Uh, one more thing that in regards to home care services, since we are talking about it, when you enter the home, uh, those W-2s that they are working for home care services, the employer name is the person who is getting the home care service. Let's say your mom. Make sense? And the other W-2, because it's your dad, your dad is your employer. But if you look at the address, both of the addresses is the same thing. Address of the uh, in-home supportive services office address. So address is the same. Just the employer name is changing. From that employer name, you know, oh, this is my mom and the other employer name is my dad, so that's my dad. That's what relates to. And uh, also when you put the employer ID number, because the same employer, there are thousands of those people who get service, right? So you put the ID number, someone's name will pop up over there which is not the same as your dad's name. It's the neighbor across the street that is getting that service or someone else. So employer ID number, double check it, make sure it's correct. And then the employer name, delete it, enter exactly what is on the W2, which is your dad name. And the second time that will be your mom's name, let's say. Make sense? So, don't panic, you know, what's going on? I put the employer ID number and something else is popping out because, because of that. So many people are using the same employer ID number. Okay, let's look at this scenario. Um, Victor and Sharon filed to claim $650 contribution made on July 15 of 2021 to the General Hospital, and uh, that's a qualifying charity organization. Accordingly, they amend their form uh, 1040 for 2021 and claim a refund uh, by filing a form 1040X on March 2nd of 2022, which is, let's say, um, next year. The Martin had no children or other dependents in 2021. Okay, neither wants three dollars goes to president uh, presidential campaign, and they did not check the appropriate boxes on their original request. Okay. They enter the information shown in bold and follow the instruction on form ten forty to compare the to compute the refund. Martins provide the reasons they are filing in ten forty x in part three. They also attach both originally filed and revise the Schedule A because it's or contribution goes to a Schedule A, right? Okay, so those are the numbers that we have. And here we go to the next page to see the form. So as you see, this is uh, form 10 for the X, says amended return, of, uh, husband name, wife's name, social security, address, phone number, May filing jointly, everything is same as before. So nothing new over there. Um, if you want to change the, um, you know, the status, then that's that might be something. But other than that, uh, adjusted gross income uh, is the same. So nothing changed on gross income. If it was changed, then you have to show it in here. But other than that, is the same number. Itemized deduction is the one that is changing. So original itemized deduction was 29,200, but they forgot the $650 to add it. So now the itemized deduction went to 29,850. 
So what's the difference? The difference is uh, 61,894 in here. Zero minus 650 is minus 650. And here 91,000 minus 29,000 is 61,244. So there's nothing else in between. Um, so that number will go all the way down in line five. Same thing in here. And taxable income based on that amount of taxable amount previously was $7,027, but now based on this calculation is 6,949. So that's 700. And seventy-eight dollars difference. Okay, um, and then you follow up the line again. Um, subtract line uh, seven from six, and enter it in here. So we entered that um, line ten is other taxes, whatever it was. We don't know. Uh, just enter it the same way. Uh, total tax 11,204 before, but now total tax is 11,126, which is $78 less tax. Line 12, uh, any income federal tax withholding, add them up total is the same thing. Estimated taxes paid still is the same thing. We didn't forgot anything on that part. If you forgot anything on that part, obviously you have to fix it here, but you didn't. So keep going. <clears throat> we paid also uh, uh, $800, $848 with the tax return. And that uh, was exactly 11,204, which it was showing in the original tax return. So we paid all of it, nothing is left. We are not behind anything on the tax. So we paid that. But now there's nothing in line 18. Line 19 is the same number in 17 goes there. Um, now in line 21, it says, um, if line 11, which is that number, is less than line uh, um, uh, this number, column C, is less than line 19. Enter the difference. This is the amount overpaid on the return. So they paid $78 over. That's what we want. And I think as a second page, let's look at it. In second page, if there is anything related to your dependent, probably goes there. Um, na name of dependents with the social security number and everything will be updated in here. But we don't have any of those dependents, so they have no dependent. If they had, it would be here. Uh, presidential election, if you want to change your mind, and you want government to pay $3 towards that. But this is part three, which is important. You have to explain what happened and why you are amending this. And this is where uh, I explain in my amended return for that person. I put IRS, based on IRS notice 2014-7, the both W-2s, will not be taxable since the client taxpayer is living with uh, service receivers, home care service receivers in, on the same loop. So something, whatever you have to explain, you explain it right there. And then you sign both, if you have husband and wife, then both people need to sign. And this is the uh, form that you will also attach Schedule A, previous Schedule A copy, and the new version of Schedule A copy, how it looks like, and uh, attach it to it, not staple it or something, but just put it together, and um, either you can do paper return or e file. Okay. Any questions on amended return? But this is the last part that we'd like to cover as. Uh, 
individual taxation for this course. The rest of the things is just preparing taxes and practicing um, scenarios in practice lab. Yes. So because they want their excess amount paid to be applied to a future return, you would need that information for next year when they come in. You said, I need to see your amended return. Yeah, there is a place for that. Um, maybe previous page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, amount of, of line 21 you want to be funded to you. So you see that line 22, if you want to get refunded on that, then uh, put $78 in line 22. But if you like that $78 goes to the next year as a estimated taxes paid. So enter the year here, what year you want that to be applied and uh, then put the dollar amount here. Let's say you want a little bit refund and a little bit, so separate that. Let's say you want $30 back. So you put $30 in line 22, and then you put uh, $48 in line 23, and then enter what year you want this to be applied, let's say next year. Mm -hmm. So if this is 2021 tax year, then you, do, you put year 2022. And this person normally has estimated tax anyway. If you look at line 13, he or she is paying a lot of estimated tax. So yeah, then this will be a good document for you to kind of remember that I how much estimated tax you pay plus this $78. And then you add up that, and then in next year tax return, there is a place for estimated taxes paid. Who knows how much do you pay? You know, nobody knows. So you have to keep record of that, uh, how much estimated tax you pay. Um, like I have a note on my office that I quarterly I pay estimated taxes. As soon as it gets deducted from my uh, account automatically, I write a note over there that another, let's say, I don't know, thousand dollars has been paid. And that way I keep track of it. Uh, so that's, that's easier. Um, also estimated tax, normally when you prepare your tax return, if you paid less than necessary, then your software will automatically says, based on this situation, looks like you need to pay estimated tax next year, every three quarters, starting April 15. So the first payment will be April 15, and then every three months after that. And uh, that's fine, uh, you know, and I normally check the box, you know, my uh, automatic deduction from my um, checking account. Because if I pay, I get a refund, it, it gets deposited in my checking account. If I owe, then it gets deducted from my checking account and that's automatic. So you don't have to be worried about anything anymore. And that will be done automatically. And it's quick also. Let's say if I need to get refund, refund goes very quick in my checking account. Uh, some people say, I want a check, but that is not a good idea nowadays because it takes long time. It gets lost. Uh, it takes months sometimes. So I don't know. It's not, maybe not a good idea. I believe. Anyway, uh, questions? Okay, we are good for this moment. We got, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, practice lab and prepare some tax returns at this point.